and I'm Nelly Rose. We are here at Fashion Revolution for the upcycling workshop at Building Blocks. We're going to be changing waste and upcycling it into fashion garments. So we've got some amazing designers coming up. We've got Katie Jones, we've got Alex Noble, Dr. Noki, and we've got Brandy Easter showing us how to mend our clothes. So guys, We're here with Dr. Noki, who has just run an upcycling workshop um, of how to transform t-shirts into kind of monsters Bingo. in the underworld. Well, they're called the magazine. I started my textile career as a collagenist back in 96. So I used to start sewing t-shirts together to make a magazine idea, to evoke the idea that as a rave generation, we were more interested in what was printed on a t-shirt than what was printed in a book. I personally, it's because my dyslexia and my inability to sort of learn that way was very difficult for me, it was very frustrating. So I suppose I wholeheartedly embraced what was printed on a t-shirt as a way of dealing with um, an isolation, a mm. tribalism back in the sort of 80s, 87, 88. It was your Home. identity, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so like my tribe, yeah. You refer to yourself as an artist, not a designer. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, I'm purely taking things that have been designed and through, an, through artist communicating another idea by collaging already designed pieces together. And this is my way of communicating change within what a t-shirt is about. Wow. You know, so the slashes have evolved into this mega slashing, I call it uh, mega webbing. So it's sort of cutting through all the kind of graphic design, the branding, the whole um, concept of what a t-shirt is originally designed to do, which is to be flat surfaced with a print on it. And now it's got, it's not flat surfaced, it's very textile based, it's very slashed into and it's opened up. And now there's, well, they're all layered together. So it's kind of subverting the whole concept of what a t-shirt is perceived to be, especially from when it came from you know, my world, which was the 80s, and we wore it in the rave because it was fashion changed. You didn't wear t shirts. You had to dance in yes, as well. Yes, it, precisely. <laughs> it was pure function. You had to abandon old fashion from the 80s collars, reveres, jackets, shirts. Didn't work when you raved. It was pure t shirts, it was trainers, it was tracksuits. And with that came the branded message from them. Um, attached. So what do you want to provoke in the younger generation of designers, of people that are wearing their garments without thinking about where they're made or where they're going to go? Well, it's, it's mainly for the individual, really, mm -hmm. to try and give them an alternative to the branded message on a T-shirt and the fact that, you know, if you're creative, you have many of those T-shirts in your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and buy the brand new one, you know, yeah. because these t-shirts could have holes and stains on them, reasons why people would throw stuff away. What you, I love... You can use that as inspiration. ...is that you you say to young people, you can copy me, You can you, I want you to be involved, you want to bring them as part of the Noki world instead of just creating something to be sold. Mm -hmm. So I really think, as Orsula has said, that you just flipped the generation of fashion. And I mean, I was heavily involved in it as a consumer. Coming from the 80s, as I say, being a raver, I billboarded myself with the brand into the rave. And while I was in the rave, it was all smoke and lasers and the modernity of the music and the electronic. I'm known as the mashup king. I said mashup once in an interview and it stuck with me because that's what the rave was. You were in a smoke-filled, laser-pumping kind of environment with people wearing branded clothing. So there was an, I had my daddest moment in the rave where I started reading all sorts of different words, letters, phrases. I think the rest of my life has been trying to deconstruct that new alphabet and collage it to, I suppose, attract the next generation into creativity, buy it, because now we're 20 years later, there's a landfill miles high, and I'm trying to infiltrate it, there's a landfill infiltration, and I'm trying to infiltrate it as a positive connection to textiles and create something new and hopefully you know it's very youth orientated it's quite great you know it's got it pulls from my experience of the rave forward into the 2016s to what kids are looking for now which is a sense of being a sense of modernity a sense of tribalism 
and most importantly using things that would otherwise be cast yeah. away and end up in a landmine when you can create something that's beautiful. Well, I, I get the rip and tear of modernity. I, I do get it. I understand it. I just chose, I just choose to rip and tear what's already been ripped and torn. Brilliant. Awesome. Well, thank you. And yes. Very nice to meet you. You too. Nelly and I are joined with Susie and Katie and we're here at the upcycling workshop. <laughs> so we're going to have a look at the creations that have been made. So Susie, what are you wearing? Uh, well, I'm wearing a piece from the workshop. This is um, a series of layers of t-shirts uh, upcycled with the help of Dr. Noki and the students here. It's a pretty mega multi-layered, <laughs> uh, yeah, deconstructed t-shirt piece. 